Been looking for some hilarity and some angst. I'm your host, Matthew Potter, short sale guy, hedge fund connection, co-founder of The Family Tree at Real Broker. Hit me up if I can help you grow your business. Speaking of growing your business, if you are looking to grow your PPC business, you need to check out Bateman Collective. They are absolutely crushing it for clients right now. Go ahead and check them out uh, for all of your PPC needs. We're going to go ahead and give you a breakdown of how we do things around here. We have five pre-selected questions. Uh, six one comes from our audience. And then each one of our panelists will get 45 seconds to answer, then two minutes to chop it up. Points will be awarded after each question. That, that with the most points will win. We're going to go ahead and go into introductions, introducing last week's champion and birthday boy, RJ Bates the third out of Texas. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. Uh, RJ Bates, this, that, and the third. Uh, picked that up from uh, Potter this morning. Uh, no, I'm excited to be here. Uh, you know, people ask me, what did I want for my birthday? And I said, honestly, if I could just have a platform where I could shit talk CJ, Eric Brewer, and Steve Trang, that's perfect. And it just fell on a Thursday. So I'm looking forward to the next hour. This is all I wanted for my birthday. I can actually vouch for the fact that he really did say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, Mr. Disruptor himself. Introduce yourself, Steve Trang. Steve Trang, we solve sales problems. Uh, I am really looking forward to today. It's a good, good day for RJ. It's his birthday. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we don't offend him or hurt his feelings or have him crying after the show. Like That's the thing I hate the most about our Thursdays is when he calls me after the show to cry. Right. But be, So I'm hoping today... That doesn't happen. That'll be my birthday gift to him. That's a pretty generous gift, uh, you know, comparative to what we were talking about giving RJ for his birthday. All right. <laughs> next up, we have the mayor, the most famous person in York, Pennsylvania, Eric Brewer. Introduce yourself, boss. Uh, that's actually not true. There's multiple celebrities from this general area. Lady Gaga, I believe, is actually from Lancaster, which is 20 minutes away. So. Um, yeah, anyway, so I have, uh, the best credit score on the panel, uh, I'm the best person, um, Steve actually creates sales problems is what he does when he involves himself uh, in the sales conversation. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm just a jag. I don't know if you guys watched the interview by Steve Smith last week, but I'm, I'm heavy on the terminology jag. Uh, unlike everybody else here that's got a platform or a product or all that stuff. I'm just a just a jag. That means just a guy. I'm just a jag. <laughs> York, Pennsylvania's most famous jag, Eric Brewer, <laughs> folks. Last but certainly not least, coming to us from Richmond, Virginia, CJ Jefferson. Introduce yourself, boss. Chris Jefferson, Richmond VA, uh, the U. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, I saw that uh, RJ got his typical, I'm not here, shoe in victory. So congrats to RJ, I guess, for winning last week. Uh, shout out to the five below birthday balloons in the back. Um, <laughs> you know, happy birthday to this guy, RJ, man. Uh, hopefully he actually combs his beard today and uh, goes out in his driveway, man, and plays with his hockey puck. <laughs> and his neighbor, his neighbors can, can look at him across the street and, and, and post videos online about this weird-ass guy who plays hockey on his, on his driveway, man. So shout-out to RJ Bates. Man. Game on. <laughs> oh, man. I really want to see like a mashup of hockey and pickleball between CJ and RJ. Like, I don't know. We got to, we got to figure something out there. All right. We're going to get into it with question. Number one, last Friday, Colorado was leading Stanford 29 to nothing heading into halftime. However, they ended up losing 46 to 43 in double OT. How do you keep your ego in check when things are going well? Start us off, RJ. Well, I mean, if you're Eric Brewer, you're just a guy, just like Jerry Judy. So it's pretty easy because he's never had anything go well. So I think Eric's probably going to answer this better than anyone. Um, <laughs> but um, listen, I, I think it's important. And, you know, when we talk about entrepreneurs and, you know, where we come from, a lot of us come from wanting to create this freedom, time freedom, financial freedom, whatever it is. 
to stay focused on what we got started for, where we're trying to go, um, and and not get sidetracked by what the the world is telling us that you know we're doing well or social media tells us we're these superstars. Um, I think in the case of Colorado here, they got a little bit of that where their ego got inflated. Um, they they probably lost a couple of games that they knew that they were going to lose, but they definitely should have you know finished the job there against Stanford. And I think it just they got relaxed and forgot um, where they started, which was a one win team last year. So I think just stay focused on where you started and where you're trying to go. There you go. Stay focused. Stop looking for the clout, the RJ Bates clout, if you will. All right. Next up, Steve. What are your thoughts? Um, I think it comes from experience and wisdom, right? Not to say that I've got it all figured out, but I have had so many times where I felt really good. And those moments where you feel really good are followed very shortly after something bad happening, right? So now I operate kind of like my head in a swivel. Like if something's good's happening, like I'm looking around, maybe not very healthily, but you know, something uh, I need to be aware of something around the corner, right? Uh, uh, Jim Collins calls this uh, healthy paranoia. Uh, I believe, right? And it's just operating with a healthy amount of paranoia, always looking to improve things. Um, I think focusing not just on the wins now, but focusing on process, which is not as, as exciting, uh, can, can keep us grounded. And also being surrounded by great leaders around our organization who help me stay focused uh, on what we need to on, focus on the right things. There we go. I, I like your healthy paranoia these days, Steve. It's great. All right. Next up, Brewer, what are your thoughts? Uh, I got one word for you. It's gratitude. Um, I don't know necessarily that Colorado's ego got in the way, um, but I think it's a good analogy. And, and, and I'll use that to, to make my point is that there's a lot of people out there that win for a period of time or have one big win and they make one fundamental mistake and they, they react with entitlement, not gratitude. And the, the, the simplest form is that is they give themselves too much credit for the positive things that are happening in their life. And while you have to operate with confidence, there needs to be this balance of gratitude where you recognize that the people around you, your school teachers, your parents, your community, your friends, God, all put you in that place where you were fortunate enough to be able to benefit from those circumstances. And gratitude is the thing that will keep you from allowing that success to, to, to snowball into where you get blindsided, caught from behind, and next thing you know, you're bankrupt or miserable. There we go. All right, bro. I like it. I like it. All right, CJ, what are your thoughts? You know, I think this question is really kind of almost like an interesting parallel to the to the market, right? We've got a lot of people in the market right now that or were up 21 or 29 0, right? Uh, going into the fourth, going into halftime. And what's happening and what happened with, with, with Colorado, right, is that you've got to continue to be adjusting and moving the bar, right? Even when you're up 29 zip at the half, uh, you should be making adjustments. You should be looking at different ways to go about what you're doing, uh, different ways to create revenue in your business. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, if you're not creating a next level to get to, if you don't have an attainable level that you're trying to reach on a continuous basis, uh, it's going to be easy to, uh, to, to let somebody sneak in the back door like RJ and uh and, and steal your deal and make a bunch of money and, and now you're broke yeah i mean i think i think cj has got a great point you know if you look at the last three four years right like we all looked great we all had the win in ourselves and it was something that was brought up was like when hey keep in mind remember right now that all the money you're making right now it's not because you're a genius right like that flip that took too long means you made more money that's the market that we're in right and so like things can change i think what I failed to account, you know, with the uh, market adjustment is how much uh, was the win in our sales and how much was us. Right. And I think right now we saw a lot of people that took more credit than they should have. And that's what you're talking about, Chris, where people didn't make the adjustments. They didn't tweak. Uh, and now they're, you know, uh, going on social media and calling each other out, whatever. Just <laughs> <laughs> seeing a lot of that nowadays. I'm curious, Eric, why do you think, uh, Colorado's loss had nothing to do with them, you know, feeling like they had already won the game. Their ego, their, you know, they kind of phoned it in at halftime. Um, so I didn't watch the game. I, I can't say, for example, right? But so let's use the analogy of the wind being at your back, what Chris is talking about. You, they were artificially up 29 nothing. 
right? Like, the, 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 were they 29 points better in that half of football than the other team? Uh, we see it all the time where there's a, a close game or evenly matched teams uh, where there's a blowout for one reason, where one team had a bunch of bad luck, they had injuries. I, I don't think that they were 29 points better of a football team than, than Stanford. And I don't know that it's e ego settled in and 25, 30 minutes of football. Um, I'm not so sure. I'm not, I'm not ruling it out, but I'm not saying that ego was the, the, the thing that, that led to them blowing a 29 point lead. So here's the thing about Dion. I mean, this is our, our third question that involves around Colorado football. So he obviously is a topic. He makes Colorado something that you want to talk about, but this prior week, prior to this game, he was talking about, Hey, is his son, does his, you know, little shows off the watch. And he's like, hey, we got to get Shadur uh, an NIL deal for watches. He can't keep showing this off for free. Um, we're we're talking about Travis Hunter, one of the other star players on there. He was talking about, he, hey, you know, he basically won the Heisman week one against TCU. There's a lot of talk from the head coach, the leader, about how great they are. And I think that impacts when you go into halftime 29 nothing, and your leader has constantly been inflating how great you are. I think that impacts, hey, we get, we're not focused on finishing the job. We're more focused on what our leader's been telling us, which is how great we are. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like all the burr investors, right? Right now, you know, the last couple of years is like burr, 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 burr. Now interest rates hit 8%, something everybody said would never happen, right, uh, has now happened. And you have all these people that were following this one particular vertical, one particular business model, and you have a lot of people who didn't adjust, right? And so now they don't know how to source out deals. They don't know how to do creative financing. Uh, everybody's trying to jump into doing fix and flip now, uh, which you can ask RJ, how's that going, right? And so, you know, look, I mean, if you're, if you're up 20, happy birthday, RJ, if you're up 29, <laughs> zip, right, half, uh, you, you better have more than one play in your bag that you're coming out with uh, to score more touchdowns because you can't let your foot off the gas there. All right. I promise you guys a good show today. Uh, this one's definitely going to be a good one. Um, triumphant return for CJ on this one. 20, you know, he was up 29-0, decided to come in. Come into PTD halfway through the month. Go ahead and score himself a point. So points to CJ on that round. Uh, appreciate the insight there. We're going to get into question number two. This one's definitely a burning topic right now, in, and it's gaining steam in America. So let's go ahead and rip the Band-Aid and get to it. Um, do you think now that buyer brokers do not have to be compensated in the MLS that this will have any impact on the value of homes, or will unrepresented buyers be taken advantage of? Start us off, CJ. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, like, let's be realistic. I mean, you know, in, in many ways, realtors eat up uh, parts of people's uh, ability to purchase a home, right? You know, I talk a lot on here on the show about affordability and, you know, my my affinity for uh, the realtor community. Uh, shout out to Potter uh, Train and, and, the, and the whole realtor gang over there. All right. Uh, but look, affordability is at record lows, right? And you've got agent commissions that are eating up uh, you know, part of purchase prices for people uh, and, and could allow some compression in the market uh, that I think could help. Uh, so I think this is a good thing. I think realtors deserve to make less money personally, uh, especially the ones that aren't familiar with investing, don't know how to wholesale, don't buy their own properties. Uh, all they do is just shuffle people around, put out cookie trays and uh, tell everybody uh, with their old headshot on Facebook uh, how great they are. And uh, now's a perfect time to buy a house. All right. Uh, so shout out to all the realtors, man. Man, you forgot the most important tagline, you know, marry the house and date the rate, bro. Come on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, RJ, what are your thoughts on this? I, I, I cannot wait to hear RJ's thoughts on this one. This is like finding out that you finally get to go buy a house without having to bring along your little special ed friend. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> To answer your question, that's my only <laughs> shot. I'm going to take at realtors, okay? Um, Cassie said I got to slow down because she's a licensed realtor. And we love the 1% <laughs> of you that are good. It's just, for me, it's the other 99%. Um, will this impact the value of homes? No, I don't think it's going to have any impact on the homes whatsoever. Uh, will unrepresented buyers be taken advantage of? No. 
I think what you'll see now is, is that people are just going to be able to educate themselves by simple Google search. YouTube videos will be made available. Um, there are going to be plenty of people that provide free education to homeowners to figure out, you know, all of the disclosures and whatever addendums need to be signed and things like that. People have been doing real estate without realtors forever. I don't think that this is going to lead to people being taken advantage of any more than they're already being taken advantage of by their ignorant realtors. Let's be honest. Are they really taking care of us? I don't think so. More often than not, they're just getting the fucking leg. Happy birthday to RJ. <laughs> Yo, happy birthday, Steve Train, too. Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve. What are your thoughts on this one? Uh, I don't think it's really going to affect pricing so much, right? And I think that's the problem, is that this whole class action suit came about because they were saying the price was getting inflated due to the commissions. I don't think the commissions are affecting the price, right? The fee is the fee. Uh, it doesn't come out of the buyer's pocket whatsoever. It comes out of the seller's pocket, right? But it doesn't come out of the buyer's pocket. So I don't think it's really going to affect pricing, but I do think buyers are going to get screwed. I think buyers are going to get completely hosed. Um, you know, when you're looking to buy a house, to you, when you're buying the house, it doesn't matter which realtor you work with. In your mind, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter until something bad happens. That's when the value of the realtor comes in, right? Whether, you know, you need to get a sewer line scoped over here or what's it going to cost to replace this boiler. There's a lot of things that come in the middle of the transaction where agency actually is important. It's not in finding the house. Finding the house is a useless skill, right? Anyone can do that. You can do that on your own. It's knowing what to look out for when you are under contract. So I think in the long run, buyers get screwed. And I think the rest of the country is generally okay with that. Yeah, there we go. Oh, All right. Eric left. Left. Man, Brewer, Brewer didn't even want to answer the question. Yeah. He's so like, no, nah, I'm out. Wait, wait for it. There we go. It's Eric's turn, CJ. Calm hey. down. All right. All I right, Brewer. Wait. Brewer, are you back with us? Blink twice <laughs> if you're okay. <laughs> it's the there new we go. Office. Uh, <laughs> all right, Brewer. Go ahead. Uh, first, I want to say if you're a real estate agent and you're watching this, um, you can call or text me at 717 818 3694. Two of these boneheads here um, <laughs> that continually just crap on real estate agents. Uh, I made $113,000 since October. 13th from real estate agents. So um, you can choose to berate them and operate in your little niche of the world that does 4% of the deals, or you can actually learn how to talk to people that aren't desperate foreclosure homeowners um, and do deals in the open market where people that wear like a shirt and tie once a year go to work, uh, not t shirts and hockey jerseys um, that smell like the inside of winter mittens. Your so, minute's over. It no doesn't point. matter. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, bottom line is you, you never had to pay a real estate agent. You could have listed a property, paid an agent 3% to list it, and they could choose to give a half a percent to a buyer's agent. Builder's been doing it forever. It will hurt sellers. If you're not offering a buyer agent commission in the short term, no one's going to show your house. They're just not going to show it. Um, or they'll negotiate from the buyer to get a little money. Something will change. But in the short term, I don't see it having a big impact at all. DJ. Did yeah, you right. or did you not hear Steve's answer? The two examples he gave as to what a real estate agent is going to help you with is so apparently not, they're contractors, bro. They're co the contractors. Exactly. No, it's, thing. it's things to know, right? It's the the parts about the house that you need to inspect, the parts that you need to make sure are working fine, right? When they're saying, is this a warranted repair? Is it a non warranted repair? Are we going to have this handyman that we're calling Joe's handyman to make the repair? Or are we going to have a licensed contractor do the work, right? These are the kind of things that can have long term repercussions. I think you can figure that out on Angie's list. All right. So uh, you could, you could, but now we're assuming everyone's competent. Now, we're do you believe 100% of America is competent? Of course not. Neither is there 100% of realtors. You think the 42 year old, uh, Sally Joe, who spent two weeks getting a real estate license, knows what Mary, needs to be Mary Kay on the house. I think they'll know more than a typical homeowner. But that doesn't make them. That doesn't make them competent. All right. So, like a couple of things, right? Like on what Steve said and Brewer. Brewer sells all these houses, but I guess he uses a calculator and an Excel spreadsheet when he does math because simple mathematics would tell both of you all 
that while the buyer doesn't pay commission, the, mm -hmm. the seller pays the commission, but it Correct. affects what their net out is that they can achieve on a sale. So if I'm a seller and I have to pay 6% of commissions on a $400,000 house and my payoff is X amount of dollars, it's going to greatly affect they don't how much care about that. my property for because I want it to a certain net. People don't care about the net they're trying to make when they sell a property. No, Maybe that's how you guys do it in AZ and in New York, but in Texas. No, in VA, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when you're buying a house for cash, cash when you're buying a house for cash, they absolutely care about the net. That's what we're negotiating. When you're listing a house with a realtor, you don't care about the net. You care about pri primarily two numbers. What can you sell my house for? What commission am I paying you? Those are the two numbers that negotiate. The net doesn't matter to them. So the two numbers you're talking about that. what impacts the net. Impacts the net. I get it. But they're not saying I need to walk away with 400000 They're saying... I, my neighbor up the street sold my house sold for 430. I want to sell it for 430 and I don't want to pay more than 4% commission, 5% commission. They come in negotiating these two numbers. They never talk about, I have to walk away with X amount. That's, so that's, why, they're that's why they're negotiating those two numbers because it affects their net. All right. Not more, necessarily. No, they're worried about the cost, not the net. You're, you're jumping to conclusions here. They only worry but about the cost. Would you agree or disagree? that cost logically effects. mathematically everything is saying is 100 correct i'm talking about the human there's, psychology there's, and talking yeah, to a home chris you can be 100 percent right that it affects the net and steve can be 100 percent right that they don't care that what they care about is did my house sell is did, did i get the same amount of uh, money for my house that the guy three doors down did and am i being treated fairly in this commission thing because i believe or know someone that paid less or someone else will do it for less yes it does impact their net but it, it's they're, they're not asking about those two items in an effort to get to a bottom line number. Bro, what? I, I don't know what y'all are talking about right now. Of sellers, course you don't. It's sellers normal. care about how much money you know, it's sophisticated. <laughs> That's why you don't know about it. It's not like you, you capitalist. Why do you list all your homes with a real estate agent? Why don't you just put them on your Facebook page? You know how many houses RJ? we just from putting them on Facebook? We, we list them on MLS, but listen, are we oh. really going to say that people don't care? But that affects your net. Are we really? No, because I don't pay 3% to list a property. I pay 350 bucks because I'm smart. That's awesome. Yeah. Right. I know it is. But what I'm saying yeah. is how do we get to a space where <laughs> are we, are you really arguing that people don't care how much they're going to make on an investment? That is what they're arguing, you know what CJ. 98% yes. of people that didn't yes. buy it as an investment. The only people that cares about the net are investors. No, Anybody else you, you guys sound about, crazy as hell right now, man. You guys are talking to the four percent of the people that are selling. Whatever we're talking to the hundred percent of people that are selling. In, whatever one percent bubble you guys live in in life, where you think that people that are ordinary people and and, and regular working people go to sell houses and they don't care how much they're going to make. Chris, their house. when you buy a car, do you buy? Yes, do you, 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 go, do you negotiate the price the of the car? Do you, you negotiate the price of the car, or do you negotiate out the door price? Listen, he just asked if they can get him approved. Let's you got to both go talk to your sales that. department. Do I make the payments here at the lot or do I get a statement? <laughs> How does, do homeowners care about what is the net proceeds to them when they sell their house? When they are sitting down with you, do they say, okay, after no. all these fees and everything, what's the net to me if I owe 200? Less so, than one or four. So I will agree with Steve on that. I would say 25% of them will say I need to net X amount. The other 75 to Steve's point, they literally care what are you selling it for? What's the commission? Like I literally had a lady the other day that was like, "Which I want to sell the net." Look, yeah, it's not this late? No, no, no. I, I'm. This is yes. the beautiful part about this question. I think that everybody actually has a very valid point. Like that. That is the that is the thing that about this. At the end of the day, I think the buyers are going to end up getting hosed on this. You know, that's just my personal belief on this, but. Just, you know, like I said, on this one, it's a hard one, but I'm going to go with Steve on this because he does, he ultimately did make the point. This is, this is where a lot of people are. They All they really care about is, yo, sell it for X, and I only want to pay you Y. That's it. Like, they don't, they don't really – and I know it's different on the investment side. The investment side, obviously, CJ, to your point, like, yo, flat fee listing. All right, here, let's do it for 300 bucks. Call it a day. You know, get the most out of it. I do the exact same thing on the investment side. So it's a very, very hot topic uh, question. That's why we had it today. I love how you guys asked the, the only active real estate agent 
here about what his consumers care about. He gives you the answer you don't like, and then you argue with him. <laughs> and he gave like, us our answer. Oh, they no, care he about didn't. that. Got it. I said that 20 minutes ago. No I one mean, listens to you. Look, to we're going to have remedial since. When, when RJ, RJ was saying, if you're buying a rental, if you if you're buying a rental, do you think some people care about the interest rate, but not necessarily the cash flow? Like it cash flows six hundred bucks a month, but they can't get over the fact that it's an eight percent interest rate. No, they only care about the cash flow. You're a freaking idiot, <laughs> RJ. Wow. I didn't realize when you were saying that two people were going to go look at a house when one was special ed that you were one of those two. Uh, look, I apologize. I this is my I fault. I guess now's a good time before we just go ahead and go to the next question. Happy birthday, Steve. Uh, who's who's going to do the read? Who's going to do the read on the NAR ad today? I can do it. Yeah. Sponsors. Oh. <laughs> Sponsor. This After episode is brought to you by the National Association of Realtors, respectfully from Chris Jefferson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Thankfully>. <laughs> Big sure, big sure to use code PTD when you're at Kroger getting your getting your cookie tray for your open house, courtesy Lynch. of Chris Jefferson. And use the charge up charge up promo code at your real estate school to get the discount. Yo. <laughs> All right. So clearly we had some fun on that one. All right. Uh, question number three, what are your thoughts about people building a brand on smearing the names of real estate educators that and then start charging for real, for uh, real education themselves. Go ahead and start us off, Steve. I don't see any irony or hypocrisy, hypocrisy in that whatsoever. I'm gonna build my entire brand by smearing Eric Brewer, Chris Jefferson, <laughs> R.J. Bates, and say these guys are scam artists for charging you when I will do this for free. And once I have a hundred thousand people in my email list, like, by the way, guys, I know that I said that you know these guys are scammers. Uh, this is 99 bucks a month. Don't worry about it. This is different. This is different. I see nothing wrong with this. I think I think I think that's integrity and a class act. Love it. Wow. <laughs> There's nothing to say other than wow. All right, Brewer, what are your thoughts? I mean, if you just break it down to the simplest form, it's a lack of integrity, right? Like I think what happens is um let's suppose that this person thought that they could give this any nothing's for free right like if you ever watched the movie um social dilemma if the product is free you are the product right so maybe that's the the, the way you could you could give away all this wholesaling information for free and you can make money on a, a affiliate relationships um but at some point as you continue to grow a community or your time to commitment and demands increase you can't give stuff away for free. There, 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 nothing in life is for free, at least not for long. Um, I think this person, you know, hypothetically, this person got uh, caught uh, <laughs> saying one thing and doing another, and uh, that's difficult to recover from. Uh, it will come back to bite them, I'm sure. There we go. When Brewer is the voice of reason, you need to listen. <laughs> All right, CJ, what are your thoughts? Yeah, look, I, I think if you allow somebody to get you excited by bashing and smearing somebody else in effort to discredit them, to then edify themselves as to why their product or service is better, um, I think you basically have the same level of intelligence as Steve Trang and Eric Brewer on the last question. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. We're just stopping there. I'm not even mad at look, Brewer literally left. <laughs> All right, RJ, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Let's play a little imaginary game here. Okay. Let's play, I'm gonna Let's play start hockey. my brand. Let's play hockey. Yeah. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna start, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. And I'm going to build my brand on smearing the name of everyone in the industry. So I'm going to be a dick. So we're just going to call the channel Flip With Dick. Okay. So Flip With Dick is my YouTube channel. And I decide I'm going to smear Pace Morby's name, Jerry Norton's name, Steve Trang, Chris Jefferson, Eric Brewer, everyone's name out there. These people have families. They are sitting there building their business. They have tens of if not hundreds of people that work for them, that lives 
rely on the education that they're selling. These are businesses that these people created and you're going to smear their names for all these years. And then finally, when your teenage son gets old enough, like mine, I'm going to say, okay, you come on now. You really smear everybody's name. And then you're going to say, let's start charging. Like, bro, seriously, get the fuck out of here with this. Paper, man. <laughs> like, we don't need this in our industry. Like, it's unbelievable. You built your brand on smearing other people's names. And now you're doing the exact same thing you've been saying everyone else is a piece of shit for doing. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Happy Listen. birthday to you, train, man. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so look, RJ, I just want to be really, really clear here, right? Look, if you're... If you haven't lost 150 pounds, you can't say my name, right? If you, oh. haven't, if you haven't made eight figures in a year, don't say my name. Bro, if you haven't employed 11. 400 people, don't Bro, say my name, That's all I got for you. Month, bro, 11 figures in a month, man. <laughs> I just, I, I just, I don't understand why this is such a thing in this industry where we literally have to smear other people's names to build ourselves up. And then you go out and you do the same thing. I hate it more than anything. I, that's why I love doing this because even though we give each other a hard time, we actually do like love each other. We actually support each other. We do mostly business. like each other. We we <laughs> we we say, hey, like, <laughs> hey, you need to learn novations. Go learn from Eric Brewer. We're not sitting there and smearing Eric because he believes that realtors are worthwhile. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Like, speaking of smearing names, you spent your entire answer on the last question, smearing the name of an entire demographic. That's not true. Because because their commission lowers someone's net, and it's half of what, when we buy their house, how it impacts their net. So if that, they did their job that better. That seems a little ironic. If they did their job better, I wouldn't give them a hard time. I still use them. So, but you think you think wholesalers as, a, as an industry are – skilled professionals absolutely not we're also okay. not licensed and we don't have we don't like force ourselves upon the industry oh, like realtors yourself. Do. oh upon I, the industry. i just i just want to note on the record for everyone i want you guys to see what it looks like live when <laughs> somebody who used to wholesale a lot and and did a lot of direct to seller marketing now they're making a ton of money doing novations every single month hell a hundred some thousand dollars since the 13th and guess what now their favorite person in the entire world is the realtor how about that how and about and hey, we're 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 at at Brewer, oh, hey, yeah. and so it's I'm, actually since 2013 so not since <laughs> october 13th if we're, if we're making. <laughs> So you do the math. You do you do every seven days between now and uh, 2013. Uh, and you can, if you need to, RJ, you can pencil it off on the side and erase it <laughs> if you need to. Call I wasn't, Cassie. She's a licensed agent. She can do math better than you. So I, I wasn't clear exactly where. So did RJ like this person or dislike this person that was calling other people? I wasn't clear. Yeah, you couldn't I, tell. He's on the fence. It was a scenario <laughs> where I was pretending to be this person. Like, I don't actually know if anyone has actually done this or not. I mean, it's just it's it's a hypothetical. Yeah. Google it. Flip with that. <laughs> YouTube it. <laughs> YouTube it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so a couple of things. Um, point to RJ on the absolute passion behind this. Uh, another update, just so you guys know, make sure you visit his new YouTube channel, Flip With Dick. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, he's not going to charge you anything, and you're just, you know, you're just going to get everything for free. All right, before we get into our, <laughs> before we get into our next question, I'm going to kick it over to Steve to go ahead and read a uh, ad from our sponsor. So first, first and foremost, I want to apologize uh, to our sponsor that having to be <laughs> dragged into with us, us, us knuckleheads here. But uh, guys, if you guys are looking at PPC, do what I did. Go work with someone that actually knows what they're doing. So I spent my time learning PPC, doing my own PPC, and it was, it was really hard for me to find an actual PPC provider that knows what they're doing. So do what I did. Go to Bateman Collective. Go to batemancollective.com slash PTD. Get your free consultation so that you can get PPC done correctly. Very nice, very nice. We appreciate that, Steve. All right, also, we're gonna... realtors, just 
Oh, know, it works with realtors? Shout out to the realtors. Fantastic. Shout out to the realtors. Shout out to the realtors. <laughs> Backed by NAR. Backed by NAR. <laughs> Backed by NAR and, and Kroger and calculators. <laughs> 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 oh, man. All right. Here we go. We are, get, we are getting into question number four. With the NBA season about to start in less than a week, and everyone is making predictions on the season, what asset class could do best in the next 12 months? <laughs> start us off, RJ. Buckle up, everybody. For oh, the boy. Next eight months, every week, we're going to have an NBA question. <laughs> <laughs> we have one before the season even starts. <laughs> KD, KD. Oh, man. Hey, CJ, shout out to your boy, John Morant, man. (laughs) We ain't talked about him in a while. Um, I mean, we could call Bateman Collective and be like, hey, I need the John Morant special. (laughs) I need those uh, $20,000 shit boxes where they're running the gun through them, you know? Um, I'm going to go with vacant land. Um, I'm sticking with it. Um, Based off of the question that we got rid of here, it was going to be really good. We were going to have a question about, hey, should you buy, uh, with the inventory being low, should you buy new build homes? Well, with inventory being low, the the hot asset class is going to be the vacant land, so you could go buy it to build more inventory. So I think moving forward, it's going to be vacant land. There we go. Means to an end. Solving problems. RJ Bates. All right, Steve. What are your thoughts? Um. What I'm thinking with right now, the, the, the direction the market's going, uh, I got a chance to go to Legacy uh, event with Tim Bross, and he does a lot of multifamily. I think that, you know, there's a lot of distress right now with uh, because of uh, how much interest rates are at. So I think, you know, if I were to shift, what I would look at in the next 12 months is raising capital, learning about commercial, right, and maybe investing into multifamily. I think that's a direction if you're, you know, not like tied into single family like I am, if you're looking for another asset class, I think 12 months, if you get ready for it, there could be massive opportunity where you can buy things super deep from those few apartment building owners that have a refi that's the notes due in the next 12 months. I think you can have some really good opportunities from apartment owners that have equity. Okay. Interesting perspective with the uh, market. All right. What do you got, Brewer? What are your thoughts? I was watching an excerpt from, I think it was recently this past week, uh, BP Con, Bigger Pockets runs like a big conference, and they had a panel of speakers up there. And it was pretty interesting. Um, I think most of the people in this panel would share the same opinion about the media. Like if you were to give on a scale of one to 10, how much you trust what you see on the media, I, I bet we're on the the lower half of five. And he said, you know, there's all this publicity out there about offices dying and multifamilies dead and blah, blah, blah. He goes, I rush right in. When the media puts out this propaganda, everything goes on sale. He said, so generally, wherever the media is telling you that there's blood in the water, I know that I can go get a deal there. And he goes, you know, whether I'm buying offices and I'm repurposing it as multifamily or I'm creating co-working space where it used to be a single tenant, large commercial building. So wherever there's blood in the water right now, maybe it's multifamily, maybe it's office. I think there's going to be a big opportunity to buy stuff on sale. All right. All right. Never waste a good opportunity. All right. What do you got, CJ? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'll, I always get like, uh, you know, butterflies in my stomach uh, every time Eric and Steve are right at the same time. Uh, the answer for sure is multifamily. Uh, you've got $8 billion in debt coming due, you know, this month, next month. Uh, <clears throat> we've got housing issues, right, that there's a huge needs for housing at the moment. And as Steve pointed out, you've got tons and tons, not a few, though, Steve, not a few. All right. You've got tons. Shout out to Tim Bratz. All right. You've got tons of them, right? <laughs> that are out here on adjustable rate mortgages, all right, that they picked up that they had five, 10, 15 year notes on uh, that are coming due uh, and rates are now at 8%. Nobody thought that was gonna happen, right? And so you're gonna have a ton of multifamily, I think, uh, that's gonna be coming available here in the near future. I think it's a great opportunity if you're somebody that has been operating at a high level on single family, say somewhere like a York PA, right? Now you're buying office buildings, right? You're running commercials, you're making all this money, $100,000 since the 13th, right? 
I think now is a great time to take Light some work. of that money and invest it in some uh, multifamily in the next 12, uh, 24, 36 months. And I think those opportunities will be huge. Okay, so all three of you answered the same. CJ, you threw in there's a huge housing shortage. So how does buying a because there's gonna be, because apartments, townhouses provide housing, right? So they're already gonna, available. So how is this fixing anything? Because it's what asset class would you want to pivot into, right? Not you know, so what would be the best asset class to pivot into? I think for somebody like say somebody who buys golf courses and has a YouTube channel called Flip with Dick, right? So I was that guy, right? It might make a lot of sense if I want to continue growing my business. It makes sense eventually, right? To start pivoting to look at some asset opportunities inside of multifamily because we have a housing shortage. People have going to have a bigger need for housing. Think about right now how many projects that are still in the planning phase. Think about how many projects right now, and they haven't gone construction to perm yet, right? Think about how many properties right now that are going to be that were value add redevelopments that haven't been completed yet. Right. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity available where that housing can be completed. We've talked a lot about your favorite city, I believe, RJ, Eric, as well, San Francisco. Right. Uh, I know you like to pitch a tent downtown San Fran for affordable housing. So, again, think about all the office buildings and commercial available that could be converted potentially to multifamily, provide more housing. I think that's a great way to create some affordable housing, man. So shout out to RJ. Happy birthday. I'm just saying, man, the, the past two weeks, Steven said, if he could invest anywhere, it would be San Francisco. And if there was an asset that he could invest, <laughs> it would be multifamily. I can't wait to see Steve Trang's portfolio of a park <laughs> in San Francisco. I would love it. I would love it. It would be great. It's going to look like your favorite realtor's portfolio. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm surprised that y'all are so on board with the, the multifamily. I feel like the, the 12 month run is not enough time for for the, the asset class to really fall for the opportunities to be there. It doesn't I mean, have to fall though. I mean, if it's, you just need one distressed seller to change a generation, right? Like if you have enough cash and one and someone needs to sell and they're willing to sell it for 35% of market value, like they just need this gone off the books because they can't refi this. And if they can break even, you only need one. That's it. You know what you they're going to ask us, Steve? Proof of funds, credit. No, what's my net? <laughs> <laughs> Bad. Cap rates doesn't matter. <laughs> no, 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 who gives a shit what the interest rate is? You would ask what the cash flow. Is. Happy birthday, Steve Trey, bro. I would. <laughs> feels way more. Yeah, yeah, you would. We're not. We're, we're not talking. No, about listen, Steve. Numbers. You were just at an event full of. You were just at an event. Steve, you're just at an event full of syndicators that don't have capital of their own. They raise capital from other people. They have no sitter in the process of come and do. Uh, they're it's good, they're going to have great difficulty if they fail on current investors that they've got in their syndication going out and raising more capital for these projects. They're going to have to either uh, move these properties into stress, to your point, uh, or they're going to have to find new capital to place into these investments. Both are pathways that somebody could get into multifamily, either as an investor for equity or debt or as an operator. Great opportunity inside multifamily. I'm sure not of them cared about cash flow either. All right, so that was a great round. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Brewer two points just for no. Hold on, hey, calm down over there, RJ. Don't blow a gasket, bro. I'm giving him two just because of the net comment because that was a that was the slickest shit I've ever seen. I'm um, I'm also taking this one to the chat, and we're gonna go ahead and drop we're gonna go ahead and drop one to CJ for his thoughts on multifamily. That's where we're gonna be at after this one. RJ needs to stop shaking his head. I He's swear, the third person to say it. <laughs> who who was the it's, third person that said it it's uh, all about how you say it you know all right we i guess we could give steve like half half a point like well Jesus, that the right. third. Jesus, everyone gets a, they all said the same thing hey take, yeah, take birthday, we were all right happy birthday man 
can't wait. Right. Dude, hey. Imagine losing on your birthday. That's imagine right. 12 months from now when the housing shortage is even worse, and I'm going to be like, how's your fucking apartments? <laughs> yeah. They're going to be great. Yeah, man. Happy birthday, yeah. Steve Train, man. All right, we're going to get into question number five. Oh, man. How do you feel about Florida Governor Rob Ron DeSantis' uh, law preventing home ownership for certain Chinese citizens. Uh, go ahead and start us off on this one, Brewer. We'll start with you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to pour my heart out on this question. Um, I'm reluctant to touch this. A, I don't know anything about it. Uh, B, um, I'm very sensitive when it comes to different cultures of people and speaking about it on the internet, you can get yourself in, in a world of trouble um, if, if you're not careful and, and when you talk about this. I don't really know anything about it. Um, I mean, the reality is anytime you say a specific demographic race or anybody can't do something, uh, you're going to get a lot of, uh, of, of blowback. Um, it's going to cause a lot of problems. I don't know if he's talking about, I mean, it's set Chinese citizens or these are people that are not U.S. citizens. Um, no one without a social security number and established citizenship in my uh, memory has been able to buy a house in the U.S. to begin with. I think what he's trying to do potentially is deter uh, outside investors buying up a bunch of property here um, and eliminating a lot of potential uh, affordable housing uh, for U.S. citizens. If that's the case, I support it. Listen, it's our land. We got to protect it. Man. That pirouette around the question was epic. Great job, bro. We, we appreciate that. That was great insight. The people are definitely well-informed now. All right, CJ, what are your thoughts? Man, I, I'll wait to break down Eric's answer. I'll, I'll wait to do that a little bit later. Thank you. Uh, we Steve appreciate Train, it. Happy birthday to Steve Train. Steve Train once called me about my political perspective at the time and said, hey, Listen, you don't want to rub any run the wrong way uh, to Eric's point, right? And I said, Steve, I don't give a shit. I write my own check for 14 years. Nobody pays me but me. So here's the truth. Ron DeSantis is a fucking idiot in the words of RJ Bates. There you go. <laughs> Happy birthday, Steve Train, by the way. <laughs> That's um, RJ's birthday gift. We get to share birthdays. <laughs> I'm... I'm not going to lie. This might be one of my favorite episodes ever of PTD. It's, it's been <laughs> epic so far. Like it literally has been epic. Thank you to RJ for making our day amazing. All right, RJ, what are your thoughts on this one? I, I mean, just to be honest with you, this feels like shock and awe. Like what is the most right wing thing that we can do now? Let's take away, you know, where Chinese can't buy land in Florida um, I there's other things that uh, DeSantis has done that has just felt um, very over the top to be the uh, I guess golden child of the Republican Party where it's like hey we're going hard in the paint here we're going to do everything that every Republican has ever wanted us to do um, the quote here is the malign influence of the Chinese Communist Party in the state of Florida um i i that feels a bit strong um in my opinion i don't necessarily um a, agree um with the decision uh, because america was built on uh people from other countries coming here and creating it what it is today so it feels like it's kind of anti where we came from in my opinion if we want it to be our land keep it your land just don't sell it to the chinese uh, communist party like DeSantis says there we go RJ answers the question today we we appreciate that we do all right Steve what are your thoughts well I'll start off appreciating the fact that's the first time Eric's ever wanted to not offend anybody so I appreciate that um so I'm what I'm a great kinda, day <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm kind of torn on this right because like I remember learning about the Chinese exclusionary act right and that was hurtful growing up right at the same time, China's a bad actor, right? China does, they're, they're a superpower that we're competing directly against. And they want to hurt America, which is understandable from their position, right? From our position, we want to keep China down, right, as America. So I understand where he's coming from. I think it's a mistake on houses, right? When this topic has come up before was land, right? Should Chinese nationals be allowed to buy land? 
I'm on board with restricting, you know, uh, China, right, buying land, buying houses. I don't understand where that's coming from. I think that's 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 a bridge too far for myself. I don't I don't think it makes sense. But thank you, Eric, for seeking to not offend. I guess I guess shout out, shout out Chinese drywall. That's I mean, all I can think about. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't know if this is bad. Is this it's a bad ask or not? Steve, you can tell me, but does what? this mean you can't buy any property in Florida now? They were Chinese never in any threat of them buying property to begin with. Look <laughs> <laughs> at this guy up here. Manny, cut his feed. <laughs> cut his feed, Manny. <laughs> is, is China a superpower that we're competing against? Yes, that's indeed true. Is China a superpower that is invading continents as we speak? That would be true, right? Uh, but if we, I don't know that we can take that and create the notion that Chinese citizens can't buy land or houses. Uh, now, do we know that, you know, there's the, uh, what is it, EB-5, I believe, program, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of different things that exist yep. for capital to get from Asia, from China here to the United States. I don't think all these folks are bad actors. Uh, I think what could help is, you know, things that you guys are often against, which is a little bit more regulation, right? And I think that, I don't, you know, why would we restrict people from being able to buy houses here in the United States? When we say our land, I think that it's all of our land, right? I don't think that's exclusive to, to any particular person, color, race, nationality, what have you. So I think it's extremely important to allow people to buy real estate in this country houses, land, commercial, what have you, uh, if there needs to be additional security regulations as a result as a, a, as a security threat, then that could make sense. But outright trying to create something like this, Ron DeSantis quite literally is an idiot. Yeah, I think we'll find this one. Let's be honest. Even if they do buy the land, they're just renting it from the, the government because they're paying rent on it every month with property taxes. So it's just like, you know, you're gaining Chinese citizens as uh, tenants. That's all it is. Sure. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so for actually answering and taking both sides of the uh, coin and looking at it, we're going to go ahead and toss this one over to Steve. Steve's going to go ahead and get the point on this. Um, before we get into question number six, and I'm excited for question six today, just wanted to uh, read this quick announcement. Um, if you are looking to make a change in your real estate business, check out therealfamilytree.com and schedule your collaboration call with us today. We will help you grow your real estate business. All right. So for question six, in honor of Steve's birthday, not RJ's, Steve's, just because CJ's been get, <laughs> giving him the business all day. <laughs> question number six, what would you give RJ Bates this, that, and the third for his birthday? Start us off, Steve. Wow. I mean, it's really hard. Like, I, I had to go through a list because there's so many things that we can gift RJ, right? Like, I mean, I think uh, sense of humor, talent, um, closing skills, um, a fresh shave. Wow. Um, I, it's tough. There, the, I mean, the list is long of all the things I want to help him with. So, I don't know. I guess for now, we'll, we'll just say a decent podcast. That's what I'll say. I'll gift him a decent wow. podcast for his birthday. <laughs> Excellent answer, Steve. Excellent answers. All right. Brewer. Uh, he's writing things down. <laughs> Brewer, Brewer's over there. He's been working on this since pregame. He's ready. All right. What you got, Brewer? What are we gifting RJ? Um, listen, I, I, honestly, I think RJ's a good guy. Steve, uh, at ease a little bit. Just take it easy on my man. Right? It's, it's his big day. Show the guy a little respect. Um. <laughs> I would love to give him patience. I, I think RJ um, moves a little fast. He's a little rammy. Um, <laughs> sometimes I think that may work against him. Um, so he just needs to balance like a sense of urgency, uh, which we love and respect. That's what makes him, uh, you know, the top four guys on these closer competitions or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just a little more patience. And then I'd give him a, just a big old, like, sappy pine tree um, that he could plant <laughs> in his front flower bed so, as a constant reminder to just, like, one day 
I just hope to to grow up to be more like a tree. <laughs> like that, was, that was very well thought out, Brewer. We appreciate yeah. it. Very very it's sentimental. Like it's his yes. birthday. Show him show him some some love. You know what I mean? Abs <laughs> absolutely. Every everybody in the chat, show some love to RJ right now. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. CJ, I know you've been waiting for this one, boss. What are we giving RJ for his birthday? So, so crazy, right? Like, I, I you know, y'all can't see it, but behind this camera, there's this big calendar on the wall, right? And for 365 days, you know, I sit and I look at this calendar. You know, I'm in front of this camera so often, I just stare at this calendar. And on the calendar, uh, it's got a date, right? And it's October 19th, all right? And it's uh, it says RJ Bates the third birthday and you know look i've agonized over this i've looked at this thing for so long every single day i'm looking at this calendar putting a strike as every day passes just just an anticipation and excitement uh for this day and so it wasn't until you know six hours ago that i thought to myself uh you know what would i get rj for his birthday and six hours ago i said to myself i don't think i'd get him shit <laughs> I'm like, when I really want to get this guy a gift and send it to Texas, to Fort Worth, so that he could put it behind his shoulder on his on his podcast backdrop, along with all his other Viking trinkets, his five below balloons, right? <laughs> when when cast, the kids blew him up, right? <laughs> with his with his posters. He doesn't even hang the posters on the wall. He just he just leans it up on the wall, right? <laughs> Uh, and so I said to myself, I'm not, I'm not getting this guy shit. And I'm not, I'm not getting him anything. And, and happy birthday, Steve Train. Oh, man. This episode has been fantastic. Um, I mean, look at RJ right now, look at RJ right, now right? Yeah, like, look, I'm just look picking at RJ, him. Dude, like, he's, he's, he, he, he's writing our names down right? in lipstick. No, you don't. He's writing our names down in lipstick, like he's Steve Buscemi in uh, that, uh, was that Happy Madison? Billy Madison movie. All right. Billy Madison, yep. I get the answer. Yeah, right? yeah, you get the answer. What what right. are you getting RJ Bates for his birthday? <laughs> this is what I want for my birthday, okay? First and foremost, before I get started, happy birthday, Camden Burr. Um, super excited to watch your journey this year um, with your first year in college basketball. Um, excited to see what you do down there at uh, Seton Hill. Is that correct, Eric? That's it. Yeah. I'm excited to see what you do down there. Keep draining those threes. Um, now, the rest of this, what I want is a real Asian friend. Okay. So <laughs> one of those um, Chinese communists <laughs> can come over here and replace the train. All right. Because, you know, Disney said I need more Asian friends. Um, a non socialist judge for pardon the disruption. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much anybody yeah. besides yeah. Potter. Uh, I really think the show would be much more interesting if we replace CJ with Tony the Tony the Closer. Uh, I mean, wouldn't everybody love to see Tony the Closer? On TV? And uh, and yeah, as far as you, EB man, uh, listen. I, I, I don't want anything from you, man. I just want you to keep showing up here and talking about being consistent as a tree. That makes me so fucking yeah. happy. Yeah. So I was thinking as an alternative gift, maybe, maybe CJ and I can chip in together is to make a podcast channel for RJ that will have subscribers. Uh, wow. That's Flip with Dick. Uh, <laughs> and the intro, yes, the intro video will be on the Country Club. I, I actually think I'm going to create a video today that's called Flip With Dick. <laughs> for RJ, for this RJ show, you should just eliminate the word with. <laughs> oh, shit. Brewer's out of pocket. <laughs> we've hit the mark. We've hit the, we've hit the mark for, for Eric to stay focused. That was it. Yeah, now, now a word from our uh, now a word from our sponsors. NAR. Oh, all right, so National Association of Realtors, I'd like to thank you all for your support. Uh, thanks for adhering to all of the ethical requirements of being a realtor. We certainly appreciate it. All right.
I have I have to say question six, uh, definitely that was a fun one because of RJ's birthday today. I will say I love RJ's answer on that though. Like, I mean, he went ham. Like he did. So I'm gonna even though he somehow insulted me, which I still don't understand this one. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and give him uh, the surprise five for his birthday. That's my gift to you. You so get five the below, five. not five points. No, so you get <laughs> five below. <laughs> All right. So the win today will be for the official birthday boy today. Uh, you know, we we appreciate uh, RJ. You know, let, letting us have a little bit of fun today. But of course, you know, coming back in you know RJ fashion. That being said. Thank you to everybody that tuned in today. We've had a ton of fun. We're going to go ahead and do outros. We will start with our winner today, repeat champion. I think that's the first time we've had one in a long time here on PTD. RJ, birthday boy, go ahead and say bye to the people. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, really appreciate everybody that's reached out um, and, and wished me a happy birthday. I, I, you know, a lot of you guys have sent me videos. It really means a lot to me. Um, love everybody on this show and in so many different people in this community. Um, we do like to, to have fun on here and, and give each other a hard time, but, uh, behind closed doors, uh, we really truly are friends and, uh, love you guys. Appreciate everything that you do for, for me and Cassie over here. Absolutely. I'm glad to see that those AI videos made them on over to you, RJ. That's, that's <laughs> <good>. <laughs> all right. All right, Steve, say bye to the people. Uh, it was a great show, fun show as always. Uh, got to see something new for the very first time. Like I said, Eric, seeking to not offend. It's a very, very momentous occasion. That was a great birthday gift to RJ. So happy birthday, RJ! Uh, I'm glad you got this charity win from the Socialist Judge. It was, it was, it was a worthy victory. All right, calm down over there, Steve. You know, come with some better thoughts, and you'll win too. So you know that's kind of how it works around here. All right, next up, Brewer. You know, turning over a new leaf, uh, no longer offending. You know, say bye to the people. Uh, I want to make a suggestion on the record. Um, if any of you follow Steve on Instagram, he has, uh, he could be the worst dressed influencer in the entire industry. Um, he either wears mom jeans or like, I saw him the other day with like high tops and socks up to like the back of his hamstrings with like a pair of Jordan ones that had like Tiffany's turquoise. Um, so in an effort to get you more votes, I would get from behind the desk and stand. I think if you stand um, while you do the show, uh, people will laugh. And as a result, they'll feel sorry and then vote for you. And get some goddamn sun on those calves. Like, if you're going to wear shorts, like, you live where it's 112 degrees in January. Like, just lay out for 12 minutes. Um, happy birthday, RJ. Uh, CJ, good to see you. I feel like it's been a long time since you're on the you show. Too, it's good to have you, you back. Uh, that's all I have. That's it. That, that's it? That's all you got today for us, Brewer? <laughs> that's all. <laughs> he chose violence. He did. He chose violence in the outro. CJ, go ahead and say bye to the people. Yeah, I want to tell RJ happy birthday. I want to congratulate him uh, on his win. I mean, we, we all had that friend in school that, you know, it's like, you remember the guy, you're like, don't give him the ball, don't give him the ball. Right. And then every once in a while he gets the ball and he shoots it and you're like, oh, all right, great. Like, good job. Uh, so, shout out to, uh, that, you know, that kid was always more pumped than everybody else when he got a participation trophy. Right. Everybody else, the, the real competitors were like, I can't. But like we I only wanted a trophy for first place. But there was always that guy who was just pumped and he, he would put it up on his mantle uh, and then eventually grows up. Right. And he starts a podcast and he then sticks it behind him. Uh, when he starts doing podcasts. So happy birthday to RJ, man. Uh, you're a great guy, man. It's a pleasure always doing the show with you, uh, even when you get uh, a layup win. Uh, Steve, Eric, always great to see you gentlemen as well. Potter, my guy, you're looking good, looking healthy. All right, skin is glistening. All right, look good, man. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're doing well. Uh, look, it's Thursday, man, and I'm back. All right, so Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, starflippingdeals.com. Got a class tonight, man. I'll see you there. Peace. Don't worry. Don't worry, CJ ain't selling nothing tonight, guys. Nothing. Ain't selling nothing, man. <laughs> not, sell, not selling anything. 
All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. I really hope that you had as much fun watching this as we had just chopping it up here. We will see you guys next week. Have a good one.